I've only got the Da Vinci Jr. for a little bit longer and it's almost out of plastic. But hey, it's Filament Friday. Let's print something. This week's Filament Friday suggestion comes from subscriber Jimmy Lupa Lupa. It's a garden hose to pressure washer. Now I'm not going to show you all the steps in XYZ wear. Just let me show you what I'm getting in XYZ wear. I downloaded the latest and set it to the Da Vinci Jr. And I'm seeing this wire frame instead of the actual STL file. Once I slice it and everything, then it shows up. This is really strange. I sliced it at 0.2 layer height, 30% fill, and just sent it to the printer. And here it is. I took it out of the printer and it's got some support material on the bottom to break away, but the threads look really good. So I'll have to try this on the hose. I'm just going to break away the, the support material here and see how good it breaks away on PLA. It's a little bit tougher than ABS, but it's breaking away. It's almost like breaking away glass. It's so brittle. So this is a surface that really doesn't matter, but the hole itself came out really good. And it's very round. And like I said, the threads look good. So that's the next step. I will try this out with my garden hose and show you how it works. I stole a little rubber washer from another hose nozzle and stuck it on here because I didn't want this thing spraying backwards and getting me all wet. It screwed on pretty easy and tightened nicely, so it fit good. I was really surprised. Once I turned the water on, it started spraying right away, and I could see leaks coming out of the nozzle and then dripping around the sides. So it was definitely leaking between layers. And as far as pressure, eh, it was okay. So there you have it, the finished product. This was actually very interesting. It screwed on really easy to the hose and uh, worked really well. I could see where this is a base for future designs, like you could use this as the base and then add other branches to make it into a fountain. Or add something really silly to spray water on the kids in the summer, you know, they want to run through the water. So this is a nice, nice design. Now I would have liked to try this in ABS and I think I'll do that because then all those leaks that are around here, maybe I can block those just by taking some acetone and really sealing it. I can't do that with PLA. So that is one advantage to ABS. But I don't know how good the threads will turn out. It'll be a good test. So overall, I like this design. I think this came out really good, and I think the Da Vinci Jr. printed it really, really well. I'm very impressed once again with the quality out of this $349 printer. It's great. So here's a finished close-up view of the print. You can see the threads inside, and all the holes look round. The whole assembly is very, very round, so it's a very good print at 0.2 layer height. So, overall, do I recommend the Da Vinci Jr.? Yes, I can actually recommend it. I think the quality of the prints is really good. For $349, I think it's a very solid printer. It worked really well for me. I like some of the features they've added, like printing right from the SD card. Um, I'm not sure I like the Bowden tube setup and there's been a lot of complaints on Amazon from people who bought it about that bed leveling, you know, getting prints to stick. And I showed that in a previous video. So that's, that's something, just know if you buy one of these, you're probably going to have to adjust that bed in the way I showed. But overall, for $349, this is a pretty solid printer and you can print right out of the box once you adjust that bed and make it stick. So yeah, I can recommend it. It does have cartridged filaments, meaning you have to buy your filament from XYZ Printing. You can't use just anybody's filament because there's a chip inside the spool. And this is a spool that's out of a DaVinci 1.0 cartridge. But this one has a special holder inside that has a, a microchip of some kind, some kind of ID device that tells them that it's a genuine XYZ filament. 
and that sets the temperature and a bunch of other stuff. It's, it's done to make it easier to print. The problem I have with it is they've only got four choices right now and they say they're going to come out with more. Well they told me that about the 1.0s they are come out with more and I'm still waiting. Uh, they're telling me now there'll be wood filament by December. Uh, maybe a flexible filament. You know, I gotta wait till that. I've had this thing almost 18 months, a year and a half, and I gotta wait another six months. That's a long time to wait. And then there was another time where I think it was a longshoreman strike in California, something like that, where I couldn't get filament because it, it was being shipped over into the U.S. I couldn't get it. No one had it. I, I needed some red filament and I couldn't get it. So you're really locked into one source. That's a little bit bothersome to me. So, yeah, they cost more, but it's more the fact that I can't get different choices right away. And I, I can't get it sometimes because of other forces. You know, I, there's a lot of companies selling some very good filament. And I'd like to use it. So that's kind of my complaint about the cartridge filament. Now, some people don't like the price. And this one, it's got a legitimate complaint there too because they sell I think it's twenty nine dollars twenty eight ninety five or something for a spool in here now Amazon discounts at the same price as the cartridge for the 1.0a but this one comes as a spool this one comes in this case with a spool inside and this and they actually charge more for this one so it doesn't have all this extra plastic yet they're charging more and I know PLA doesn't cost you know that much more or if it costs more at all to ABS so they could raise those prices at any time and of course they could lower them too but raise them at any time and, and you just gotta pay it I think that's a strategy that's not gonna work in the long run 3D systems did that with their cube printers and I hear a lot of people say just stay away from the cube because you gotta buy their their spools and their spools are a lot more expensive so I don't mind buying the company filament and helping support and keeping the prices down, but I think there needs to be some way to let us print other filaments. So that's my only resistance to this. It's it's not the cost. It's the lack of choice that that I can use in my printer itself. But that's just XYZ printing models in general. And I actually took my 1.0a and I have now reflashed it. So stay tuned. There's more details on that and why I did it. It wasn't just to save money. There was a legitimate reason. So anyway, overall, I can definitely recommend this printer if you're just getting started. If you're just a beginner or you just you got some kids at home and you want to introduce them to 3D printing, very, very good. But just know that six months to a year down the road when you want to try to do something new if they don't have some new plastics or if they haven't lowered the price of plastics it can get very expensive and you'll be very limited so you'll probably end up selling it and getting an open source one so anyway that's my summary um, I hope that helps you guys out in making a decision it's really your choice some people have asked which would I prefer, a DaVinci Junior to a 1.0. I'd take a, a 1.0, a new one, with a good extruder, a 1.0A. I'd take that over this any day because I get a build, bigger build area. I can do either plastic, and down the road, if I want to reflash it to an open source printer, I can do that. So that's my choice, and I, I love the way they print, and I'll just keep using my 1.0s. This is going to go back. So that's it. That's all I got for now. I hope you enjoyed this Filament Friday. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. And thank you to my Patreon supporters for making all this happen. I'll see you next time.